This is the MSI Claw, a new handheld that was released about a month ago that was intended to rival the likes of the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally. But the major difference is that this is the first handheld from a major manufacturer that is running an Intel chip as opposed to AMD, which got a lot of people very excited for this thing, as if Intel Arc was some kind of savior to handheld gaming. But as we can see from preliminary testing, it might not be all that we hoped it would be. Let's go over the specs, pricing, and performance of the MSI Claw so you can make an informed purchasing decision right after this video's sponsor, MadMonk. Introducing MadMonk, the ultimate supplement designed specifically for gamers like you. MadMonk is a proprietary blend of high quality and patented ingredients like Brainberry that can improve your overall focus in a chewable tablet. It works immediately, giving you that instant boost you need to dominate the competition. MadMonk is also not a roller coaster ride like other supplements. It gives you a stable and focused brain without the crash. But it's not all about performance. MadMonk helps with stress management and is excellent for your oral health too. Plus it's packed with ingredients historically used by snipers, vikings, and even Tibetan monks. But that's not all they offer. Meet MadMonk Champion, the multivitamin powerhouse that combines $100 worth of products into one convenient pill. From boosting immunity to supporting beauty, Champion is your peace of mind in a single dose. And for those looking to boost their diet, there's MadMonk Greens. It's the perfect complement to your life, ensuring you get all the nutrients you need to stay at the top of your game. My wife and I take this every night just to ensure we get all the healthy greens we need. Mad Monk might not be magic, but it's just real high quality ingredients in a convenient form factor. So if you want to try them out with a 100% satisfaction guaranteed or your money back, go to the link in the video description and check out how Mad Monk can help you perform to your fullest. The MSI Claw was released with three different variations. The cheapest was at $699, and that came with the Ultra 5 135H chip and 512 gigs of SSD storage. If you're willing to spend 50 bucks more, you can bump that up to the Ultra 7 155H, which has a processor that can boost a little higher and theoretically have better performance. And then for another 50 bucks on top of that, you can get the same processor, but with a one terabyte SSD, and that comes out to 799 USD. So the prices on all of these are hovering around the other Windows handhelds, MSRPs, so it's not outlandishly expensive or anything and falls in line with what the other handhelds released at, but there's more there to talk about that we will discuss later. The MSI Claw I received is that middle configuration with the Ultra 7 155H chip for $750. So please know that this review will use this as the baseline for testing. And with that Ultra 7 chip, you also get 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM and half a terabyte of Gen 4 NVMe storage. In the box, you get the claw itself and it's laughably large charging brick, which is definitely the biggest charger I've seen in the PC handheld lineup, which is kind of a bummer since this thing is supposed to be portable. It's just kind of funny to break out this huge charger to power it. You can obviously use smaller third-party chargers as well, but it can be a little finicky as to what works and what doesn't. It should also be noted that the MSI Claw does not come with a case in the box as opposed to the Legion Go and Steam Deck that did come with cases. So a little lost value there, but it's not the end of the world. Just be sure to keep that in mind when purchasing. And do know this is not going to be a super duper in-depth review. I like to showcase these reviews from mostly a user experience standpoint. I'm glad content exists that people test the sound of a fan in their quarter of a million dollar sound devices, but I feel like for the average person that data does not really help you make a purchasing decision. So I'm gonna provide you all the information you need coming from someone who has used the device in a way that is easy to understand and digest. Just looking at the MSI Claw, you might notice that the form factor looks very similar to the ROG Ally. And while that is very true, I actually like the feel of the Claw better than the Ally, mostly because it's not as blocky and has these curved handles that better fit the shape of my hands. It is slightly heavier than the Ally, coming in at 676 grams compared to the Ally's 608 grams. And while that may not seem like a non-consequential number, when talking about something you're gonna be holding in your hands for hours at a time, it is noticeable. I never found myself having hand cramps or uncomfortableness while playing for long periods of time, so that was a major plus. The back of the device is almost entirely vented, so don't spill anything near your claw or take it to the desert or anything, lest you want your device clogged with sand or root beer. After opening the back, you'll find that it's not actually entirely open, it's only partially vented. So is this an engineering design or just an aesthetic choice? This venting does attribute to some good though, since when I was using the claw, there was almost never a time where I felt the heat of the device in my hands, even when playing AAA games for extended periods of time. The warmth of your device in your hands can get uncomfortable over time, even if it's not like burning your fingers, but I never felt that on this device like I have on other handhelds like the Steam Deck. And I feel like the fans on the claw are barely noticeable compared to the Steam Deck and Ally providing a quieter gaming experience, which can be a big plus if you're playing next to a sleeping partner in a library or at a funeral. One thing I dislike about the internals is that the SSD is hidden underneath the fans. So swapping out the SSD is not as seamlessly easy like it is with the other handhelds. You have to remove almost the entire cooling assembly to get access to it. 
and the more barriers to entry you add to your storage like that, the less likely people are going to change it. This might have been done deliberately by MSI, but who knows. Also, putting the SSD directly underneath all this heat doesn't seem like a good idea to me for the health and lifespan of your storage, but I'm not an engineer, so I guess we will see in time. Now, the battery life on all of the PC handhelds isn't amazing, and the claw is no exception. They promise two hours at max load on the 53 watt hour battery, and through my testing, I'd say this is almost accurate, maybe a little less depending on the game, so it's in line with the other handhelds except the Steam Deck OLED, which obviously gets a longer battery life. I almost never play when I'm not plugged in or have a power bank with me, so the battery length isn't that big a deal. Until we get better battery technology, there isn't much we can do. It is what it is. The handheld also has this stupid true gaming emblem positioned on the top so that anyone who sees you playing it knows you are a real gamer. The I.O. next to it is simply volume buttons, a 3.5 millimeter headphone port, a USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 port, a micro SD expansion slot, and the power button. We also have two triggers and two bumpers. And while the triggers are fine, I really despise the bumpers. I think MSI wants you to hold it in a very specific way so you can press both triggers at the same time. But the way I hold my devices, I have my finger hovering over this line on the bumpers and it, it just makes it very unsatisfying to press and unlike any of the other handhelds released. So be prepared to relearn how you use the bumpers if you end up getting this device. We have two more buttons on the back of the device that are small, but can be remapped to whatever you want. So it's a nice touch to have for buttons you don't need to press constantly in games. On the front, we have two Hall Effect joysticks. So that means they are impossible to develop drifting and theoretically should provide a more stable joystick experience. We have a nice D-pad on the left, A, B, X, Y face buttons on the right, as well as start and select type buttons and two more buttons that operate the quick settings menu and the MSI Claw software. The screen is exactly the same as the Ally. It's a seven inch 1080p display with a maximum refresh rate of 120 Hertz. And it does support variable refresh rate. It's bright, it's beautiful, and I have no qualms with it. Realistically though, you're gonna be playing most of your games in 720p anyway, but we will cross that road later. The speakers are pretty good considering the size of the device, but nothing amazing. And I end up using headphones 99% of the time anyway. The device comes preloaded with Windows 11. And after going through the lengthy install process, you should do Windows Update as well as the built-in MSI Claw software that will handle all your drivers and operations for you. I will say that while the control software isn't perfect, I do prefer it to Armory Crate on the Ally as it's just better suited for a handheld experience and a little less convoluted to go through. You can use the software to do things like remap buttons, change the RGB lighting on the joysticks, perform all your updates, and access a front end that allows you to download and launch game launchers like Steam or Epic Games. None of these come pre-installed by the way, but MSI does provide easy to access links on the front of the software that can lead you to easily grab them. The quick settings menu will be your bread and butter, but it just breaks a lot of the time. I also hate the brightness slider because it doesn't actively lower and raise the brightness with the slider. You have to release the slider and hope the brightness is at the level you want. Not sure how hard it would have been to just lower and raise the brightness with the slider like every other device. You can change what's on the quick settings menu, but out of the box, it provides easy access to TDP power control, the virtual keyboard, ending tasks, and other useful functions. Now, this is running Windows, so it should theoretically just run any game, regardless of anti-cheat or anything like that with the Steam Deck, but there have been a lot of reports of some games running worse than others, or some not running at all, due to the Intel Arc drivers. I'll give MSI a pass on this for now, as I know it takes some time for these devices to continue cooking months after they are released as every software update will make it more and more usable. The Steam Deck was a hot mess when it launched too, so I'm gonna to try to give them the benefit of the doubt and hope that any issues they have more with game performance and stability will be fixed in the near future. The MSI Claw has a Wi-Fi 7 chip, which is cool, but all I have in my home is Wi-Fi 6 and testing that performance went as expected. The speeds you get on Wi-Fi will be better than most other handhelds at this time, but you'll still be limited by the game launchers themselves, as they usually don't let you maximize your internet anyway. And the NVMe SSD performs good enough for a handheld and comes from Kioxia, which is definitely a reputable SSD company. Let's talk performance, where is where the claw really falls flat. Looking at others' testing, it seems like not only is the claw falling under performance compared to the ROG Ally Z1 Extreme, it even falls under the base Z1 chip and sometimes even the Steam Deck. I doubt any of the performance woes are due to the hardware, but most likely due to the Intel Arc drivers just not being mature enough. We saw the same thing when the desktop Intel Arc graphics cards released but those also got better in time. I kept trying to get Ghost Runner running, but experienced different crashes over and over. Some alluded it to being Unreal Engine's fault, others was about video RAM requirements. This game runs really well on the Steam Deck and ROG Ally, so I'm not quite sure why I couldn't get it to run on the Claw. It's not a popular game these days, and the Claw is not a popular device, so I could not find anyone experiencing the same issue online. Elden Ring ran slightly better than it would on the Steam Deck. 
but on the Ally, this game at the same settings usually hovers around 50 to 60 FPS. So that's a considerable drop in performance. I will say there was very little stuttering, so while the performance isn't as good as the Ally, it's still totally playable. I ran the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark using the Steam Deck presets, which is essentially 720p and everything on low. But I turned off FSR to get a real feel of that Intel processor. I'm pretty disappointed in this game especially, as the numbers we are seeing here are the same that we could get on the original Steam Deck, a handheld that you can buy for $350 direct from Valve these days. I guess this 1080p screen is not there for demanding games, and it's just for indie games like Dave the Diver or One Step from Eden. It does play those types of games very well, but that's to be expected. Battlefield 2042 is not a brand new game, but it's a game you can't play natively on the Steam Deck due to all the anti-cheat stuff. And at 720p and low settings, we are getting in the early 40s and late 30s in terms of FPS, with the occasional stutter when an explosion nearby happens. This is not the type of experience you want when playing this type of competitive game. In the Claw's defense, I don't think these types of games are ever a good experience no matter the handheld, but that might just be my opinion. Shout out to OKS Gamer on YouTube for doing loads more testing on the Claw versus the Ally. I'm going to reference some of his testing numbers, but I really do recommend you go watch his video, and I'll drop the link in the description. With modern games like Forza Horizon 5 and God of War, we are constantly seeing the Claw losing out to the Z1 Extreme on the Ally, but even losing to the underpowered Z1 base model Ally which I should remind you is a handheld they sell for like $400 these days. Imagine spending twice the amount of money for less performance. And again, this might all be resolved in six months time due to driver updates and patching, but seeing this much of a performance loss on day one and even day 20 at this point, is just not a good look. So that's the performance on the claw and it leaves a lot to be desired. And it's a real shame. I like the feel of the device. The screen is good. I like the hardware. The front end software is enjoyable. That Wi-Fi chip is going to be awesome for years to come, and I like that it doesn't get hot in my hands or get too loud during daily use. But I, I can't see a world in which I can recommend anyone buy the MSI Claw at this time. At that $800 price point, you expect a device that is at least comparable to the competition. And the hardware is for sure, but with all the performance blips we're seeing right now, and the fact that the Steam Deck OLED is only $550, and the Z1 Extreme can often be found for $500 open box or $600 brand new, it's really, really hard to recommend anyone buy the MSI Claw for now. There's just no innovation, no special sauce, nothing unique. It's unfortunately just another handheld. But who knows, the Claw might be amazing in six months or a year. It's hard to tell. Or it might drop in price 50% and then yeah, it might be worth it then. But at the current price point with the current drivers, I just don't think it's worth it to wait around for it to finally get good. But hey, that's just me. If you bought a claw and love it, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from y'all. But if you're still on the fence about which PC handheld you should buy, check out these videos where I review the Legion Go and the ROG Ally, and get subscribed for my upcoming three month review of the Steam Deck OLED. Please like the video if it brought value to you, and get subscribed for more technology content. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching.